How long can a smoking hot stock just keep surging higher, including today? Take GCT Communications. That's a broadband provider with a twist. GCT gives its clients dedicated private lines, allowing businesses to connect directly to their data centers without going through the public internet, which is slower, far less secure. If you're embracing the cloud, maybe you need a private network. GCT is one of the few companies with a scale, I mean huge scale now, to provide truly global service. What sets them apart, though, is their business model. GCT doesn't spend fortunes laying up miles and miles of optic cable. They actually lease a lot of their network from other service providers. And this low-cost model, asset light, has allowed the company to expand like crazy. They've been gobbling up the competition left and right, which is how this stock has rallied. Get this, over 1,500% over the last five years. You heard that right. Not to mention giving us 114% gain since we discovered it in December 2016. The growth has been explosive, and that's why the stock has been such a huge winner. But how long can they keep it up? In late February, we learned that GTT is shelling out $2.3 billion to acquire, acquire Interroot, one of the biggest independent fiber and cloud networking companies in Europe. It's a lot of money for a company the size of But then again, betting against these guys has been a very big mistake at every step of the way. So let's check in with a very exciting team. Go to Rick Calder. He's the CEO of GTT Communications. Get a better sense of his company's story and where it might be headed. Mr. Calder, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Jim, great to have thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have a thank seat. You. Well, you've been one of the... Uh, Really one of the great stories of uh, great growth stories of this era. And it's your first time on. So I want you to kind of just walk people through why companies like a Royal Bank of Canada or a Tenant Health need GTT. Well, I, let me start by, Jim, you, you did a little segment about us in December of 16 and said we were the best performing stock no one has ever heard of. <laughs> and we were at 27 then, we're at 58 today. All so right, thank appreciate you, but that. This is, uh, you know, look, you're, we, we love growth on this show because growth brings ultimately great profits. But what we like for you is, is that we like your trajectory. You keep buying to be owning the space, which is what we want. Well, we're, we're about a $2 billion company right. now, pro forma for Interroot, the acquisition you mentioned. We play in a market that's three or 400 billion. We think we have less than 1% share that's populated by a set of incumbents that are distracted, that are focused on mobile, on content. ATT is going to fight with the Justice Department right, to right. buy Time Warner right. Media. We think it's a tremendous market opportunity where our growth over the past five years has been 50% per annum. We think we can grow faster over the next five years. So give me the value proposition. I am Royal Bank of Canada, and uh, you just mentioned some companies are big, and uh, I might just say, you know what, i got to go with ATT. I, uh, ATT is uh, huge. And, and someone in the boardroom says, GTT, faster, better, simpler, speed, agility. Well, it's, it's a simple value. We, we connect people across organizations around the world to the cloud. Right. We talk about the cloud. The cloud is a tremendous asset. Most networks today were built when the cloud didn't exist. Right. If you're an AT&T or Verizon, you built a network that's purely private. If you want to get to the cloud, it was through a back door in the back of right. your network. Right. Our network is built around the cloud. We tell organizations around the globe, Royal Bank of Canada, you want to get to the cloud, we'll have diverse, secure connectivity to every one of your locations to take you instantly to any internet address, to any cloud service provider, to any one of your other office locations with simplicity, speed, and agility. Okay, now, this acquisition in a route, when I did the work on it, I, I think it's disruptive, but I also noticed they've got some churn issues. They haven't been growing. How can you make it so that they are a better company? Well, we, we've bought a, a whole series of companies over the years that mm -hmm. weren't growing. In aggregate, we've been able to combine them on our platform and grow at that 50% per annum rate. We see the same thing with Interroot. Just a little story about Interroot, too. Sure. The CEO, Gareth Williams, came to see me in September of, uh, of last year just because I didn't know the business was coming onto the market, just to say, let me have breakfast with you to understand the power of putting these two businesses together. We met for four hours. We had to order lunch because it was such a compelling combination, and he's right. It was a very contested auction. We're sure we we're going to win, and we we're just so ecstatic about that fantastic combination of being the disruptor to take it to ATT, Verizon, BT in the market. Okay, now Oppenheim wrote a piece, and they recommend you. They're saying, listen, here's a concern. GCT needs to increase its sales force to 250 representatives, ending 207, they had only 165 at the end of the year, uh, in order to be able to achieve the organic double-digit revenue growth. 
Uh, is that really a gating factor? You need more salespeople? I, I mean, it, it, we've actually had the high quality problem of outpacing the size and scope of our sales force. We are trying to hire people as fast as we possibly right. can. I was in our New York office at one pen. We've expanded it twice. We're going to expand it again. We have our competitors from two and three fours above us saying, we want to come into GTT. We think this is the attractive banner to be part of at this stage. And we think we can grow our, our sales force to 250 and beyond over the next six to eight months. Okay, where are we in, in uh, the adoption of the cloud? Because I think that in the last three weeks, we've been starting to realize that we're much earlier than we thought. I mean, it's clearly early. but. P IT organizations, CIOs are beset by a core challenge. They're saying, I want to take my IT ops out of my office and move them to Amazon, to Azure, to right, Google right. Cloud, to SAP, to Oracle. What they're saying is, I need bigger pipes. Right. My, the bandwidth into my office is not big enough. It has to be secure. It has to be diverse. I need someone who understands how to get multiple access lines into each and every one of my offices. That's what we do. And we do it significantly better than the incumbent telcos. And we think we have a tremendous opportunity to take their share. Now, uh, some people told me, you know what? Look, they're not making any money. I come back and say they're going for the growth. How do you, but how do you deal with the idea when someone says, ah, you know what? When they start making money, give me a call. Well, we're not making net income, but we are making cash flow. Right. We're That's an incredibly good cash flow business. One of the, the core reasons why we do acquisitions and we take charges associated with those, but we are a cash flow machine. One of the interesting things about our model is we're CapEx light. We haven't built all of the access. We rent them from the players who have every single one. We trade with 2,000 vendors around the globe and it leads our, our business to spend 5% on CapEx, not 15 to 30. Right. And, and if you're an investor, you look at our business and say, oh my goodness, what a cash flow. Yeah, it is great cash flow. I'm glad you pointed that out because a lot of people, if you wait for the actual earnings, you miss the story. A lot of the telcos only had cash flow. Comcast only had cash flow at the beginning before they started making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is Rick Corder, GTC Communications, president and CEO. And I've got to tell you, this is one of the great growth companies that hit us. And it's not, it's not late. It's still early. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.